What's up, everybody? Retro Wolf 88 here. And today I've got another discussion video for you all. In today's discussion topic, we're going to talk about something that's very important to me and very important to my guests as well. And that's going to be the pros and cons of physical games versus the pros and cons of digital games. And little spoiler, I'm pretty sure we're all on team physical here, but <laughs> this discussion is not going to be to crap on digital games because, like I said, we're going to talk about some pros of digital games as well. I'm your host, Matt, a.k.a. Retro Wolf 88 and I'm joined by Los from The Big Retro Show, and I'm joined by Robert and Wes from Gaming Off The Grid. Uh, Los, why don't you start us off and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and your YouTube channel and where people can find you. Hey, you guys, this is Los from The Big Retro Show, and I do The Big Retro Shows. YouTube show is a very young channel. Uh, started maybe five months ago and I've been having a blast the, the show deals mostly with retro movies video games uh, Toys and music so I try to mix up my content as much as possible. I've been having a blast I've been meeting a lot of great people YouTube on Twitter and, and all of that stuff so, so uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, come and discuss this this very very important and controversial topic Yes, sir. All right gaming off the grid take us away uh, yeah, so uh, we are uh, just a fairly new channel as well. Just been doing it north of a year. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, this topic's uh, pretty important to us as well. Yep. Um, you can find us obviously on YouTube at Gaming Off the Grid. And then we have social yeah, media. Yeah, the various social medias Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And we cover, you know, retro games, modern games. And we do beer reviews, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I just want to say to everybody out there, if you are not subscribed to the Big Retro Show and Gaming Off the Grid, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> you're, you're really missing out. They're two amazing channels, and I love their content, and you will really enjoy it as well, especially if you like beer, video games, and all things retro. <laughs> and all to right. Retro Wolf, too. you got to hey. subscribe to Retro Wolf, yes. too. Subscribe you to guys are, you are. You are seeing this, and I'm subscribed yep. to both of these guys. Mm hmm Two of my favorite channels on, on uh, YouTube. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah, appreciate that, man. That means a lot. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch into the topics here. And so the first topic is going to be a pro for physical games. And I just want to say to you guys, if, you know, we're going to, this is mainly focused on games, but, you know, if you, if you feel like it's relevant to bring in movies or music or any other uh, physical media uh, into the topic, feel free to do so. Um, but the first topic we're going to discuss is a pro to physical games, and that is the actual physical experience of the item. So, Los, take us away. Yeah, so this topic is um, near and dear to my heart, I think, and I think to, to both of you guys, too. So the experience of buying digital, me uh, digital media, digital video games and movies and all of that, Back in the day, it was really kind of a, a whole experience that you would undergo in picking out a game or a movie at the video store. It was something that it carried a lot of weight. So back in the day when you would go to a video store and 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 pick out a video or a movie, it, it was like you would take the whole family and go into the car and you know you would talk and interact with one another. And it was kind of like a whole experience that you would you would have. Uh, and once you got to the you know video store, you would you know argue about what what uh, game to buy. You would uh, get to see all the cool cover art. You would get to look at the back of the uh, the back of the games and kind of read a little bit about them. So it was like a whole experience that you would have that I think is lacking from this digital marketplace that we are so used to. Not to knock the digital marketplace because there are a lot of conveniences involved with that, but you lose that that um, experience of going to the store and getting the physical media, having getting to argue with you know your siblings or with you know whoever you were with as to what game was better. Um, nowadays, it's 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 a little bit difficult to do that because of course with digital media, you're mostly looking at it um, from your couch using a remote. And it's it's just it's it's just not not the same experience, um, you know. And when when you were out getting getting whatever you were getting at the store, you might find something else that you want that's totally unrelated um, to to the game that you're purchasing or the movie that you're on a rent. Uh, there was an opportunity to uh, to get snacks, 
you know? And I know that's kind of like a funny thing to say, but it's all part of that experience. When you're trying to entertain yourself, you know, you want to have some snacks with you. Um, it's, it's all part of that experience. And I think that um, just by you not having the opportunity to go out as more, not that there aren't any stores that you can go to, but who wants to go to a Target? I mean, who wants to go to a Walmart? Who wants to go to a Who wants to go to a GameStop? You know, nobody nobody wants to do that anymore. So I think that those are some of the things that I miss most. It's go being able to go to the store, being able to interact with the people that you were with, um, getting to you know pick out snacks or getting to look at the back of the boxes, especially. Um, getting to see other people, you know, other people who are in the store who love gaming as much as you do or who love movies and being able to ask them, hey, have you played this game? And yes, I have, or no, I haven't. You know, it's, it's, you lose all of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Very, very good points, my friend. Very good points. Robert and Wes, how about you guys? Um, you know, I think another piece is like it kind of ties and parlays well right into what Los is talking about is. You know, the experience post-purchase of being able to, like, display those and not just cycle through the channels or all the, the digital files the that you have somewhere. You know, we have a lot of times where if we have a, an evening off, it's like we go to the game shelf and, and we pull a game off and look at the box art. And, and Robert and I have a, a quite a generation gap between us. So it's fun to be like, man, you this game, you know, I know you probably haven't played this. You know, this is back and, you know, whatever. And you can look at the box art and... You know, just that tangible piece, and it it you, it seems like you just invest more time. Like if we grab that VHS tape off the shelf, like that's what we're doing. That's what we're gonna watch. It's not you're not scatterbrained and doing twenty other things, you know. And uh, so there is that experience too, and then being able to display that stuff for when people come over, um, is it, really neat. And obviously, if you're a collector and you know want to build a game room or a movie room, like a lot of people have a theater room in their basement and. I think it goes that extra mile if you have that that the movie film. Wall. Yeah. yeah, I think this whole conversation can apply, you know, to music, to movies, to games. Like I collect vinyl too, so like the experience of going to get a vinyl is like going to the record shop and like scrolling through all the vinyls, looking at the art. And I remember like as a kid going to Blockbuster, that's not even a thing anymore. And walking down the aisles and renting games, renting movies, and being able to rent things was so much fun. Because uh, you could be like, man, this game is fun. I'm actually going to go out and buy it now. And you just can't really do that anymore. I know you can rent stuff online, but it's not the same. Yeah. Uh, awesome points, guys. And before I get into my thoughts on this topic, let's I just want to ask you. So what is everybody's age? And, and it is relevant to the topic, right? So I'm 30. How about uh, you, Los? I am 42. All right. Robert West? Uh, I'm 24. I'm 32. <laughs> okay. So we're all, you know, we're all in a, a, a nice little range, but. I feel like we are all at the age where we grew up, definitely all grew up in the heavy physical era and being able to go to stores. And, yeah, and I feel like it's, it's been, I'd probably say the last five years, it's physical has gone way downhill and it's yeah. like kind of sad. It is sad. It is sad. And, you know, uh, one thing, and I don't know if you guys feel the same about this, but for me, when I buy a digital game versus if I buy a physical game, that digital game, just that digital purchase just doesn't mean as much to me. It doesn't, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? There's no place like in your heart for it. And it's like, yeah. you just forget about it sometimes. It, absolutely. And like, but whereas if I buy a physical game, I feel connected to that game. You know, I feel connected to the artwork. I feel connected to the, to the manual. If it has one, um, you know, the experience the, of going out and actually buying it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that and that's an experience that uh, younger generations, they're going to lose. They're going to lose that experience because younger generations, all they know is digital media. They're not most of them are not going to know the awesome experience of going to an actual store and being able to browse everything just right there in the store and be able to pick it up and look at it. And they're going to lose that experience. And, and that's to me, that's kind of sad. You know, I, I absolutely. And going back to uh, what Gaming Off the Grid said, um, it applies to everything, music, movies, yeah. video games. And there were whole stores dedicated to music. And this is really sad that, you know, these tower records and there was back in the day, there was a, a store called the warehouse. And, you know, yeah. I used to go to these things and buy my records there, buy my singles, my cassette singles, my CDs <laughs> and all that stuff. And uh, now they're all gone. It's, mm -hmm. it's like the digital uh, landscape is now dominated music. It's and so 
it's so frustrating. And like, sometimes I would go into those stores and not even buy anything. I would just like the experience and the vibe. And I just like browsing and it's, you just can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad. It, it really is. And another thing, and this is just my personal experience. I don't know if you guys do this as well, but I find that if I buy a digital game, you know, I might play it. But a lot of the times I really don't play the digital games that much. I don't know why. It Maybe it's because I'm not as connected to it because it's not an actual physical game. But uh, yeah, a lot of times I end up not finishing the game or I only play it for a little while, even if it's an amazing game. Now, not in all cases, but a lot of times that's that kind of what happens with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Like, there's a couple digital games that we will play a ton, like that are digital only, like Hydro Thunder Hurricane. That game's incredible. But yeah, we mostly just play physical games. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So the next topic is uh, another physical pro, and that's the actual act of displaying the physical game. So, uh, Robert West, start us off on that one. Uh, oh, shoot. I thought we were kind of already there. Sorry. Uh, um, yeah, I don't really have much to add to that, I guess, than what we already said. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just nice, you know, having to be able to put that stuff in a game room and be able to, you know, have people over, whether it's a movie, music, whatever, and, and look through stuff and kind of decide what you want to play or listen to. And it's, I mean, if you have a YouTube channel, it's kind of obvious, you know, because you use it as like a backdrop. But like, I just like the aesthetic of like having like stuff on display. People can come over and browse. And it's kind of like bringing the experience of buying physical media to like your home. Because when friends come over, guests come over, they can browse your collection and be like, oh, wow, you have this game or you have this vinyl. Can I play this? I haven't seen or heard this in like 10 years. And it's like, absolutely. Bringing back that experience. That's a, that's a good point, man. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that you're right. And another thing is, you know, having a game room, I'm just kind of looking at some of my games right now. Having a game room, it's almost like you, you have your own little personal museum you know your own little yeah. personal gaming museum where you can kind of preserve because i i'm a firm believer that if you're going to be a, a game collector um, i'm a firm believer that it's your job to preserve the games to take care of them you know clean them up if you have time take care of them keep them in good shape keep them preserved because it's part of history you know physical media it's part of history and we don't we don't want Peer. we don't want them to get lost and and destroyed we want to you know we want to preserve them and keep them part of history um so you know that's that's kind of a big deal to me um los how about you no i i strongly agree with uh with everything you guys have said and you know uh, like everyone else i have stuff on display here in 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 my man cave i have uh, vinyls on the wall and I have uh, action figures and i have a um, small small shelf of video games um, I'm running out of room though, so I, don't, I can't, just, I can't display as, as much as I want, but it's, it's, it's certainly a, a conversational piece when somebody comes into your room and they're just in awe of everything that you have. I mean, I love inviting people over here that have never been over here and just opening up the room. It's like they're in Disneyland or something because they see all of the cool things on the wall. They see, uh, all of the vinyl, they see all the video games, they see all the consoles that I have here. I have a um, a Street Fighter Two machine here. It's one of the old ones that you used to like go to Seven Eleven. If you can oh, see it wow. behind me, um, awesome. I also have a pinball machine here, and those are things that you know, digitally they're fun too. But I mean, it's an actual freaking arcade machine. I know it's an actual awesome a, a cartridge. You know, it's an it's it's a pin. It's it's an actual vinyl that you can look at and hold in your hand. And I think that 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 is missing um, from the whole digital landscape. Um, so I strongly agree. I'm I'm on board with you guys on that. Awesome. So the next one is the actual joys of collecting games and finding them and hunting them down in the wild. Uh, I'm going to start off that one. So I started collecting heavily. Eh, I think it was early 2016 is when I really started collecting heavily and Prior to that, I really didn't collect a whole lot. You know, back in the day, I had a small collection before I sold it off like an idiot. Um, so, you know, I started to discover really fast that going out in the wild and going to places like flea markets and pawn shops and thrift stores and yard sales, going to all these places, estate sales, going to all these places and 
hunting down these games. It is a blast, especially if you do it with other people. An absolute blast. And even if you don't find anything, it's still a lot of fun. You know, if you have somebody with you, you know, have a good time, you know, kind of give each other hell while you're searching for games. But when you actually do find something, when you go to a flea market, case in point, this flea market that I go to all the time, um, it is a huge outdoor flea market. And it's the kind of flea market where anybody anybody can come and just set up at a table so every time you go to this flea market different people there every single time and, and it's a gold mine i found a lot of good stuff at this flea market but sometimes it's a bust well one day i was there and i was walking around back and zigzagging through the flea market for about two hours because you know if you come early people are still setting up and stuff so you just kind of make your rounds and after about two hours i didn't find anything and you know i was getting frustrated and i was just about ready to get up and i had uh, give up and i had my cousin with me and uh he noticed a tote mixed in with a bunch of junk and he said is that a sega master system and so i went over there and i grabbed that tote and i pulled it out and sure enough there was a mint condition sega master system in there with two controllers one light wow. gun and it had like six games one of them was an alex kid game Wow. And I asked the guy, I said, hey, man, how much you want for all this? Oh, and it also had some very rare um, Sega magazines in it, too. There were only seven issues of, of this particular magazine, and they were all in mint condition as well. But I asked the guy what he wanted for it, and he said uh, 35 bucks. So I got the entire tote for 35 bucks. Oh, dude. I, yeah, dude, I was happy. And I still have that Sega match just into this day. As a matter of fact, you can see it. Oh, yep, yeah, right there. Right wow. back there, yeah. So. And, I, and then I fell in love with the Sega Master System. And so to me, that's that's part of the fun of physical media, especially the physical media that's not that's not actually being produced anymore. Going out, finding it, um, salvaging it, saving it from places like flea markets where it's just sitting in a tote outside in the sun, you know, getting sun damage and who knows whatever else. Um, and then you never know when you when you find something that's just a gold mine. And it just feels really good to to find those things. All right, uh, Los, how about you, man? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I go hunting every now and then. I try to go as, as, as much as possible. And, uh, you know, I think the funny thing is that every time I see a deal on there and I don't need it, I will still buy it just because, <laughs> you know, I have this mentality like, okay, I will rescue you, little Xbox, or I will yeah. rescue you, little PS2. You only want it. You only want ten dollars, but I will I will salvage you and I will give you away <laughs> or whatever. But uh, no, I I love finding deals out there, and again, that's it's the whole experience of being out, and it's a kind of a challenge, right, to go out and find anything good these days because there are so many people out there looking for stuff, and I think that the rise of YouTube gaming and YouTube gamers going out and looking for stuff has contributed to that. So, I mean, everyone's looking for stuff. And so it's it's a challenge to go out and get something really good for a good price. Nowadays, people, you know, when you're going out to these things, everyone wants to look at eBay. Everyone wants to check an yeah. eBay price before they sell it to you. And everybody is more informed now that these these things are treasures and they're treasures to, to us and to everyone who loves video games and entertainment. And so I think that is um, definitely one of the, the the best aspects of collecting video games is, is, is going out to the garage sales, going out to the flea markets, to the pawn shops and to the thrift stores and trying to find that all that one important gem that, that and especially for, for the right price, right? So yeah, a funny story that I, I came across was that you know, I look on Facebook Marketplace a lot, and I look at eBay. I look at Craigslist. I'll go on um, the app called um, uh, OfferUp, and I will look for deals like daily, just looking for things. And this one gal had like 17 PS3 games, or it was a lot, like 15, 17 PS3 games, and she had a $5 on it. So I was like, wow. oh, well. That, that's just a price that, you know, she put on there. A lot of people I know will put like free or zero. And then the description will say, you know, the price list for all the games. And you're like, oh, okay. So it's not really five bucks. It's, you know, $10 for Mario or whatever, right? And so I, I messaged her because I wanted um, one of the games on there. And I says, I'm interested in this game. And so she goes, okay, they're all for five bucks. And I was like, holy crap. Really? 17 
PS3, PS4, they're at Xbox One, Xbox games, all for five bucks. Wow. Says, yes, and I was like, okay, uh, yeah, I will buy that all, yep. all day. And so, you know, I I grabbed those games all for five bucks. That's, um, awesome. that's, that's an incredible deal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, wow. so it's the deal aspect. Yeah. Yeah, and I yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, I found that a lot of people just want to get rid of the stuff. They don't want to deal with the hassle of trying to sell it individually, and they would just rather sell it all off at a at a cheap price just to get rid of it. Um, all right, got G crew. How about you guys? Uh yeah, we uh go hunting uh um almost every weekend. Yeah, we, the try, weather's nice. we try to go every Saturday morning and it's like a tradition and like you build those memories of like going hunting and like it's so satisfying finding things, but then you know, when you don't, it's still so much fun, and you meet like other people out and about, and it's like, hey, do you have retro games? Oh, no, sorry. And then like you swap information, and they're like, if, if we do want to sell this eventually, we'll let you know, and it's like kind of cool. Yeah, and it kind of, uh, you know, for us, I mean, we're usually operating uh, on a profit, so uh, meaning we usually flip stuff, and like, you know, this year I think we're in the in the green, like somewhere around two hundred and fifty bucks um, from flipping as to what we're buying. So it's uh, great. Yeah. So it's uh, we do sell. There's a lot of things where you know, like we just had a Super Nintendo pickup that was really nice, and there were some games we didn't have, but it's like you know what, those aren't like you know uh, holy grail games that we really really need. So we do let a lot of things go too that we that we kind of want, but it's just to keep that that uh, cash flow flipping. So. But it's a lot of fun of looking and finding this stuff. Yeah, it really is. It really is, man. It just the feeling of, especially if you've been, if you're out on a Saturday and you've been searching for a couple of hours, the feeling of finding something amazing there at the end. I mean, that's it's just such an awesome feeling. I mean, it really, it's very satisfying. And, and it's, you it's can't so cool being able to like walk through like everyone's stuff, and you're like, dude, I don't see any video games. And like you said, you know, you just look over and it's like hidden in a toad or something. You're like wait a second, is that a, and then you pull it out and it's like, uh, holy grail, mm -hmm. how much, five bucks, oh, okay, it's, it's awesome, it's such yeah. a good feeling, and it's like, such a good way to start your day, and it's just like, wow, I did this, like, it's, yep. it's, it's awesome. I know, yeah. you're like, you're happy the whole day after you find something like that. And, and you're like, like telling everyone you meet, you're like, dude, I found this for like 10 bucks, like, yeah. Yeah, and this is this is an experience that you cannot get with digital media. You you just can't. I mean, you're not going to go to a flea market and buy a digital game. You know, it's buy just, a digital download code. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah and it's digital. a big one. It really is a big pro. Um, mm -hmm. I remember finding a Xbox One at a Goodwill in a tote buried underneath a bunch of clothes and stuff, and it was like twenty bucks. I was like, an Xbox wow. One, an Xbox One for twenty bucks. The power, the power brick didn't work, so I just ha picked one up on Amazon for like fifteen bucks. So yeah, Xbox One, for a modern console, and getting that—that's awesome. Yeah, thirty-five bucks. I was like, okay, all total, and so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. You, you can't beat that, man. You can't beat that. Although I do, I do want to add this though. Sometimes I do get that same feeling of, oh wow, this is this is such a great price. Uh, I I follow this um, site. It's called um, Cheap Cheap Ass Gamer. I'm sure you guys know of that. And sometimes I'll see, wow, like a game for like two bucks or three bucks. I, I want to jump in on that. And uh, sometimes I'll find some digital deals that are like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to download that. And mm -hmm. so I do get it's it's not the same feeling, but it's kind of like the same feeling of finding a deal. You can't get deals online that you can't get anywhere else. So yeah, that's, that's you know, true. that is kind of a um, a dual pro, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, no, that makes sense, man. Yeah, I mean, I do that all the time. Like on the Switch, I'll go on the eShop and I'll check the the deals tab. And, you know, if there's a game on a digital game that's like 20 bucks and it's on sale for three bucks, yeah, I'm going to snatch that up, yeah, you know? Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. even even if the game is not is not good, I'm, I'm only out three bucks and it's not that big of a deal, you know? Yeah, you got to. You got to. So the next topic is that physical games can actually be a good future investment if the value goes up. Uh, so low, start us off on that one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we see that every single day now, guys. I mean, these games that we used to have as kids are now being sold for the same price that they were sold as kids and or a lot more yeah. money. So. You know, you guys have great collections. Gaming Off the Grid has great collections. You have almost a complete GameCube collection. Which is so cool. And, I love it. And, <laughs> and it's like, wow. 
you know, what is the value of that? I mean, you, you can't even measure it. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about sentimental value. I'm talking about hold card, hard cash that you have in your hand. And so you don't get that with a digital game because, you know, it's, it's all on your hard drive. And if your hard drive um, is fried or something happens to it, you lose all of that. And so I think that if you have a, a good collection or even if you don't have one, if you're just looking for stuff to build it with, it's it's going to eventually pay off. I mean, as the years go by, I can imagine what all these games that we have now are going to be worth. You know, in, in 10 years, every single game that you have for, you know, games that we're finding now, even for the PS2, for the Xbox, the original Xbox, if you can imagine how much the old Nintendo 8-bit games are going to go for in the next 10, 20, 30 years, you're going to have like all of these ancient games and it's it's just going to be worth so much money. Absolutely. All right, Robert West, how about you guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I it's weird. I mean, I, I get that side of it. Um, but, uh, you know, the... I, a lot of the other stuff we've spoke to, it kind of drives me as a collector more than the the investment side of it. Because um, yeah. that stuff's all relative. At some point, I, I do think like when, you know, like the Atari, we've seen prices bottom out basically on the Atari stuff. There's a few games, but I think once the people are not nostalgic for that stuff. So like once, you know, I think that maybe I'm wrong, but I think the NES and all that stuff, the SNES, that stuff will level out. We'll probably see an influx on the PS2, Xbox, game. Yeah, because Cube. the people that grew up playing it are now like adults, and they're like, oh, I remember playing this as a kid, yeah. and then the prices will go up. I, from us, like, garage selling and stuff, we can kind of see that, like, oh, it's starting to get into the next generation of consoles, and the prices are going up. And, yeah, Nintendo and Super Nintendo and, like, that era of stuff is still kind of pricey, and I think it's going to be a while till that bottoms out. Yeah. But... I think it's going to be like a like a roller coaster. Yeah, I just wonder, you know, like when I'm in my 60s or 70s, will there be a buyer out there for that, uh, you know, <laughs> rare NES game? You know, yeah, <laughs> people like the young kids won't even. They're like, yeah. what's an NES? Yeah, like, they're so, not even going to. Yeah. It. So I, I don't know. I, I get that piece of it, but I, uh, it's it's not. That's when you slap like, them. Yeah, I mean, I I, guess <laughs> I, 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 I don't have any games in our collection that. Uh, are worth a ton that aren't really good games and that's really all, all i kind of care about is the quality of the game as opposed to like oh i have this really rare game I, mean, I that yeah we're really weird collectors like we only collect things that like we love to play or that we think other people will love to play so like if there's like a really expensive rare game and it's like dude i have no connection to this game i it doesn't even look that fun we're not gonna buy it it's like it's, I don't think it's worth the money. Yeah. So it, it, we're, we're, we're weird. I guess the, the investment we make into it is like the fun factor and the being able to have people over in game yeah. as opposed to a monetary thing. I, 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 you know, if I found out tomorrow my collection was worth $10 total, I'd be okay with that. I mean, it just doesn't matter to me, I guess. No, me too. Me too. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's a great point. I actually agree with you guys on that. And, uh, Robert West, what you were saying about, you know, buying games that you want to play, games that are fun, games that you think other people would want to play, that's actually very smart. It's a lot smarter than than what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to start going that route. I'm probably I'm, – I'm giving some serious thought to uh, scaling back my collection, except for the GameCube collection. I'm still going to go for a complete set there. Yeah, you're almost there, so you might as well complete yeah, it. Might as well. But everything else, I think I'm going to scale back and – scale back to just the games that I like or I think other people would like, kind of like you guys said, um, because, you know, at a certain point, you look at this game sitting on a shelf and you're like, am I ever going to play that? I mean, no. it's just, I mean, it's, it's a cool like art piece and it's like, oh, dude, I have this many NES games. But if a game sits on your shelf for like years and never gets moved, there's probably someone out there that would want to play it. So it's like give them the joy of actually using it you know yeah it's like our goal we kind of talk about uh we have on the channel before too is like we want that top 25 on every console where if we have uh, anybody over and they say oh do you have this game odds are we probably do yeah um and beyond that uh you know whatever we get we get but we're, we're not uh you know that's just kind of our style but we we're more about like party gaming and and the couch co-op thing and all that casual so, gaming, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That's awesome. And, you know, I, and the games that, you know, you like or want to play, it's cheaper that way. It really is, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. um, because I've, 
I've put a lot of money into this collection, probably more money than than I should have spent, to be honest. I might have just a little bit of debt, you know, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, you know. I, I, I Go ahead. Oh, my, with my collection, I, I think mostly of, okay, um, I want to leave something to my girls, you know, yes. I want to leave something to, I have, I have kids. I have two daughters. One is 15. The other one is 11. And, um, you know, I, I want to leave them something. And so I can't leave them a digital download. I yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, there's no way to care about it. And, um, you know, I have records, I have toys, um, carded toys and, um, things that I want to kind of leave, leave them. And it, you know, I don't care if they sell them. I don't care if they give them away to someone or, or anything like that. I just want to ha give them the opportunity to do what they will with it. Yeah. You know? That's a really and, cool to be able to do that. Yeah. And that's something that the um, digital download could, could never, never, ever give, give them. So yeah. And plus, you know, if you have kids, you can build memories with the physical media, like playing in the game room, you know, it's like, and they and then they grow up and they're like, oh, I remember playing with dad on this yeah. game, and it's like it's it's cool. And that's priceless, you know. Yeah. You can't you can't you can't ever replace that. Absolutely, yeah. Very very good point, guys. And you know you can't. Um, I mean, it's like you said, you can't really do a lot of this stuff with digital games. You can't really sell digital games which we're going to touch more on that in just a little bit but uh so the next topic it kind of bleeds into a lot of the stuff that we've talked about with fit and this is a physical pro so with physical games you actually own the game whereas with digital games technically you don't really own them so uh robert and wes you want to start us off on that one yeah for sure um i think that's honestly for for me uh with movies music and everything that is that is the linchpin right there that yes. is the difference um yeah. i can't loan someone a game i can't let them borrow a game to try it out yeah. i if <clears throat> the other thing is we seen with the Wii shop going down <clears throat> this is the first of, of many things to come not only did pe some people lose their games but there are also some games in that scenario that they are you cannot play them now. So yeah, like gone forever. The, like the WiiWare Contra, you know, they redid some games that was only on there. I think there's and, a I think there's a Doctor Mario yeah. that's only available on WiiWare that you can never play that game anymore. Yeah, and it's somebody gone. may have a, a ROM of it somewhere, but uh, that aspect of you you can't resell it. Um, I don't know of any other thing up until the digital age that is like that. You buy a car. You can resell your car. Yes. You buy a house, yeah. you can resell your house. You buy a box of mac and cheese, you can sell that box of mac and cheese. <laughs> and and that, that goes with, with your game oh, you know, your media and all that. And then it parlays into, you know, you saying you want to leave stuff for it for your daughters and, and Retro Wolf, you talking about like preserving history. Man, when those consoles go down and and the digital marketplaces, you know, whatever. You know, all the convenience and all that stuff aside, those those games are gone. And if you view gaming as any form of art, um, that's kind of sad. You know, and I this this I could go on with this topic forever, but uh, literature I think is going to suffer from this down the line. Oh too. yeah, because books are um, now going. And, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. tell you right now. About that. It, you know, zombie apocalypse happens, and I need to save one of you guys' lives. I hope there's an encyclopedia or something around, or a medical <laughs> book that I can grab. Yeah, you can't look it up on yeah. Google. Um, so I don't know. I just think a lot of this generation, whether in pictures as well, you know, think about all the family oh, pictures like you guys have. Grandma and oh, yeah. albums. And, yeah. and, you know, we're, I'm guilty of this too. I don't have as many pictures of my life right now so other than like phone. what's on the yeah. phone. And how are we going to show that to the next generations, you know? So, yeah, well, I don't know. Well, here's what's kind of like frustrating with me is that there's like new modern consoles coming out that like don't play physical games. Like, I, don't, <laughs> isn't there like an Xbox that doesn't have a disc tray? Like what? Dude, if the, inter if the internet's down, or you know, they stop supporting that, that console is worthless. You uh, can't play it anymore, and it's like, it's dumb. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Los, what 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 do you have to say about this, man? Well, first of all, I'm hungry for some mac and cheese right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> second, second of all, I agree with everything that you guys have said. Um, it is really frustrating to lose all of your games and. You know, one day you might be playing it and then your hard drive crashes. And so you have to re-download it. Well, you don't have it anymore because it's not available on the shop. And it, it's just, it's really frustrating to not have that 
physical media, like like Gaming Off the Grid said, that you can loan to someone, that you can resell it, that you can let somebody borrow it. And so you don't you don't own it. You really can't um, give it to someone, or you can't sell it. It's it's really frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. So we've kind of combined a few uh, future topics into this one, which is which is perfectly fine. You know, knocking two birds out with one stone and all that good stuff. Um, so we're kind of talking about that you don't actually own the games; they can't be sold, traded, and loaned out. And then we're also touching on a uh, digital con and that the games can can actually disappear. So I'm going to do a screen share here just to just to show people some examples of games, digital games that you cannot get legal anymore. They've completely disappeared just to, you know, give people some examples to, to show that that's a reality. So here's an article that lists 15 games that you can't get anymore. And I'm not going to go into, into great detail about each one, but I just want to go through these real quick just to point them out to people. So we've got the uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world beat em up game. You can't oh, get that like game. That. Anymore. I want, I love Scott Pilgrim. That, that looks sweet. But yeah, I've heard from several people that this is actually one of the best beat em up games I've ever played. I never got a chance to play it either. And unless I get it illegally, I, I never will get a chance to play it because you can't get the game anymore. Um, and then we've got uh, Los. This is the one that you were talking about, right? No, um, I was talking about the arcade game. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm not sure what this game is. Do you, uh, uh, Robert West, do you guys re recognize this game? Uh, I. It looks like some type of you know, turtles, obviously, but I, yeah. I don't know. Here we go. It says uh came out in 2009, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, Reshelled. Oh, Reshelled. So, an enhanced version of the Konami game. Um, Interesting. Yeah, apparently people didn't like it all that much, but uh, Ubisoft no longer holds the license, so yeah. you, you can't get the game anymore. So that's, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is this? This is a uh, Wallace and uh, Wallace and Gromit game. Never really got into those games, but apparently this is another one that you I didn't even know that was a game either. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's weird. Uh, let's see. We've got what is this? Two Human. Have y'all ever heard of that? An Xbox no. 360 exclusive. No, I never. So it's no longer available because of a court ordered. Uh, court ordered every copy of Two Human to be destroyed. Holy shit! To be destroyed? Yes. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, I assume there's probably still some copies of the game out there um, that you can find. But that, yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, then we've got. Let's see. We look got, like a Punch Out knockoff. Yeah. So uh, Punch Out for the Wii. That's that's not a digital game. I've got a copy of that. Yeah. Um, well, I think there was a, I think there was an addition to it um, on the Wii console. Ah, uh, okay, okay, yep, I see here. Uh, Doc Lewis's Punch Out. Yeah, briefly wow. available on the Nintendo eShop, oh. promoting the console version, and then disappear from the digital store. Yep. So that's another one. Uh, let's see. Here's a James Bond game of some kind. Uh, what is this? Let's see. The Operative. The so, operative. It's called the operative. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's a never never heard of it. Yeah. Uh let's see. We've got uh, what looks like a skateboarding yeah, game. Like Tony Hawk. Uh Tony Hawk HD. Uh it was a flawed product. It ruined the physics of the original okay. game. Uh let's see. Okay, so it was removed from all digital marketplaces last year with absolutely no reason giving. So so that's another thing that can happen is games can just be removed from these digital, you know, these digital marketplaces in for no reason, for no reason yeah. whatsoever, you know. Um, so that's interesting. Let's see, we've got uh, what is that? That looks like Alan Wake. Alan Wake, yeah. Okay, it was pulled. Okay, so Alan Wake was pulled from Xbox Live and Steam this year. Now, see this this article. Some of these examples don't really fit because some of these are games that you can get physically, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's see if they have Castlevania Rebirth in here. Surely they do. I'm not sure why this article doesn't have uh, Castlevania Rebirth and um, uh, the Contra game that you had mentioned. But uh, here, here's another famous example. So have y'all ever heard of PT? Uh -huh. So PT is widely considered by a lot of people to be one of the scariest first person uh, horror games ever made. And uh, it was sort of like a, a demo, really. It wasn't really a full game. I don't. Yeah, think. it looks like it, it is a teaser for a new Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah, that was that. That's what it was. That's right. But uh, so it released digitally, 
and then it got removed from the digital marketplace. And I remember that more. Yeah. And uh, so that that was a big deal because a lot of people really loved. I think this blew up on YouTube. I think there was a lot of YouTube videos of people playing this when it, yeah. when it came out. But, uh, but yeah, those are just a few examples of digital games that have just completely disappeared. You can't get anymore. Yeah. So sad. Yep. It really that is. sucks. That really sucks, man. And as as the digital age continues to rise and the physical age continues to decline, we're going to continue to see this happen. I mean, the companies are going to lose the rights. They're going to lose licensing. Uh, I feel like they're not making they're not making as much money. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, music, music, officially licensed music and in, in games can keep can cause them to get pulled from the from the digital marketplace when they lose the rights to the music. You know, there's just any number of things that can happen, and it just really sucks because it may be an amazing game like that Scott Pilgrim beat 'em up game that yeah. people never get a chance to play, and it and and this is one of the things that cause people to pirate games. You know, when this kind of stuff happens, that's you know, and and to be honest with you, if somebody pirates a game because you can't get it anymore, period, I don't see anything morally wrong with that personally because. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree that, with you. You know, I think that's fine because, like, you can actually experience a game that you can't otherwise. So it's like you might as well give the game some more life. Yep. Well, it's a, it's definitely a, uh, it's an odd paradigm shift in the balance of power between the seller and the purchaser, where the the purchaser gains no power um, of that product whatsoever. They still the the seller still has full control of that yeah. item. Um, and it, it's just a very odd thing. If you think about it uh, philosophically, it's like there's nothing else really like that. Yeah, it's just it's a weird. really strange, it's a really weird topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And it's it's scary, man. I mean, it really it really scares me just, because I, I hate to see this kind of stuff happen. It just kind of it kind of reminds me of like, OK, um, when you buy a record or an album or anything and you want to play it publicly publicly you can't really do that even though you own the album um but you can't like for example we can't use you know uh any music that we want on youtube for That's our video copyright stuff but yeah because of the copyright and so you know even if you own it you can't do what what or just whatever you want with it yeah and i think that's kind of at play i think i don't know too much about how these things get licensed and pulled off but you know, I think that might have to do a little bit with that, but um, I mean, those are all very good points, and I agree with I agree with with you should be able to do whatever the hell you want with with the game. Yeah, when you buy it, but it, it it has to be there. You have to have access to it, and if yeah. they yank your access to it, I mean, that is not fair to the consumer. I mean, in the end, we are all consumers, and we're buying these things we should be able to have access to them and if if they yank the access then that's to me it amounts to an unfair uh, consumer practice yeah that doesn't that's just like cheap yep i agree i agree and, uh robert west you guys had mentioned the nintendo eShop servers shutting down that's another issue is when these companies their servers eventually shut down and you know it's going to happen with with everybody eventually eventually they're going to say you know what We've had this server running for so many years, you know, where it's not used as much anymore. We're going to go ahead and shut it down. And when that happens, when that happens, any games that were hosted on that server that you could download that you've purchased, you can't download them anymore. So if you've got them on your hard drive, your hard drive, you know, uh, fries or whatever, that game's gone. You can't yeah. get that game again. See you later. Yeah. 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 And, you don't you don't have to worry about that with with physical games. Now physical games obviously do have their own challenges that are similar as far as if they get damaged, lost or stolen. It's uh it's 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 scary. Let's see another physical pro and this is this is one that we have kind of touched on a little bit here and there. So with physical games, there's no need to store it on a hard drive or stream it in most cases. So uh, that's one of the beauties of of physical games is in most cases, especially back in the day, you just pop the game in the console, turn it on, and boom, you're playing the game, right? You don't, you didn't have to worry about downloading it. You didn't have to worry about updating it with patches. Um, you know, you didn't have to worry about downloading DLC and all that stuff. You know, you just I pop the game in. And play it. Yeah, right, right. But you know, with digital games, 
you have to store it on a hard drive or if it's a streaming service you have to stream it to stream it you got to have a freaking internet connection you got a good internet connection um so there's a lot of there's a lot of challenges that come with that that you don't have to worry about with a physical game physical games with most in in most cases except with some of the more modern games you don't have to have an internet connection at all you know especially the older consoles that don't connect to the internet so um yeah, so what so uh how about you guys? Uh Robert West, you want to jump in on that one? Um, yeah, I mean I think I think you hit on all the, the main points there, but uh it is nice to just kind of, you know, um be offline and not have to piss around with like, you know, I, the one thing that drives me nuts, um, and I, I don't know, maybe we're jumping ahead here, but you know, anytime you get a new game, when you put it in and you buy it day one and there's already a patch for it, oh, like, that's one of like the most frustrating things with new physical games. Yeah. It's like Dude, I just bought this, and I have to wait two hours for it to download. It's yeah. just a heck. I just kind of like throwing contra cartridge in and just letting it rip. You know? I think that's why I like retro <laughs> yeah. gaming so much. Yeah. Like, the game will always be the same. There'll be no updates. It's gonna be exactly how it was last time you played. Now, when you go plug in another modern game and you haven't played it for a couple months, you gotta download it, and, and like the menus change, and it's like, what? This isn't what I remember playing. They yeah. like added stuff. It's it's so weird. Yeah, absolutely. All right. How about you, Los? Yes. No, I agree with you guys. When I bought that Days Gone for PS4, I was looking forward to playing it. I popped it in, and right off the bat, there was an update. So I was like, okay, I don't mind waiting 10 minutes or whatever. Well, 10 minutes turned into uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes turned into an hour. An hour turned into two hours. And oh, it was just geez. pain in the ass. And I, I finally just said, you know what? I'm going to bed. I'm not waiting for this. And so... You know, I was able to play it the next day, but, it, you know, if this wouldn't have happened if I was playing on a Super Nintendo or Genesis or, or you know, yeah. whatever it was. And so that was frustrating. The other story I have is when I bought a PS4. I got it for Christmas, and I was so looking forward to, to, to playing on this thing because I had um, – it came with uh, GTA, the newest GTA. Five, five. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it came with uh, The Last of Us. It was that oh, bundle. That and I was just like, happen. yes. I was like, yes, I'm gonna play these games finally, right? And so the dang thing got um, some some uh, hacker group DDoS attacked it. You couldn't get on P, uh, the PlayStation Network, and now it's just like I couldn't play the console for like two days. I was so pissed. Uh, that's oh so my bad. god, I was so pissed. But um, it finally came online, and now it's just like, well, 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 shit, you know. If I, I I could just play Nintendo and not have to worry about a DDoS or anything like that. The other thing is that like for people who play games um, that are like MMOR MMORPGs, they're constantly changing shit on those games, yeah. and it's like, all right, well, um, you know, my my dragon or whatever is is strong and it can kill animals. Well, with the next patch update, it's nerfed, you know, yeah. and all of a sudden. What I could kill in a couple of seconds takes me a minute to kill. So how how is you know the games are constantly changing and and that's not necessarily a bad thing because there there are improvements. There is room for improvement. Yeah. Um, but you know it it just when you pop an uh, uh, a digital game in, especially a retro game or anything like that, you know what to expect with it. It's never going to change. And like like Robert West said that. You, you know what you're getting into. You you just pop it in, rip it, and it's 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 a done deal. You exactly. know, there's You're no wait. There's no waiting. There's there's no updates. It's just it's just there, and that is just something like it's really magical. Yeah, no, I, man, I completely agree, and I have a similar story to uh, to one of yours. So uh, last year when I bought Red Dead Redemption Two on the PS4, man, I was that was my one of my most anticipated games of uh, 2018. Yeah, And I popped it in my PS4 and I wasn't able to play it for, I think four hours, four hours later. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, it had to, it had to install, it had to download huge updates and patches and it took a long time. Well, what's I, really frustrating about that too is not only does the game have to update, but sometimes when you don't play a modern console for a while, the console itself has to update to yeah. play the game. And it's like, what? They both yep. have to update? Yep. Yeah. I yeah. Don't play my NES. Yeah, man. I run into that all the time. I'll turn my PS4 on, and it'll give me that prompt saying, you know, the console has to update, and and you have to go through that yeah. whole process. And, and you can't. There's some games you can't play unless you update your console, and it's like, 
man, I yeah. just want to play the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. like it's almost like saying shut up and just let me play the damn game. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to mess with your updates. Like, just... I don't stare with your updates, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's something, there's something just really badass and beautiful about just taking a cartridge popping it in a system pressing the power button and, and boom instantly starts mm -hmm. yeah 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 you just can't you just can't beat that i mean it's just it's it's great we didn't really you know we didn't touch on microtransactions and loot boxes why don't we uh why don't we touch on that just a little bit uh robert and wes go ahead yeah i think those things are uh they are not a i don't view those as a as a good thing yeah, they're, uh, they're, i think they're not fair it's you know there's that that aspect and uh you know, I just think it's, uh, you know, there's some games now that, you know, yeah, it's, you know, $60 to buy the game. And then by the time you go through all that stuff, um, there's some games that are borderline unplayable if you don't participate in that. Like, I used to be a uh, competitive Madden player, um, played in the tournament scene for a long time. And the newer, the newer games, if you want to be competitive, you either have to play so damn much that you literally can't do anything else but play the game, or you have to open your wallet up to be competitive. And that's that's just not fair. Yeah, it's it's, it's dumb because you buy the game for full price, and then you have to put more money into the game, and then in a year, that game doesn't matter anymore. You have to buy the new one, and it's like, yeah. God, they're – I mean – I give them credit because that, that's a smart business model for them because they're making tons of money. But as a consumer and someone that plays those games, it's like, dude, I'm just going to – I'm done with this. Yeah, and, you know, I think, I think uh, like, it killed the new Battlefront game. I mean, that, that literally yeah, – that was, was, like, the biggest – everyone was so mad about that. One thing that I've that I don't like about among among a, a shitload of reasons that I don't like loot boxes and microtransactions, and I, this could be a whole discussion video, it really could, but, you know, we'll, we'll condense it a little bit. Um what I don't like is that a lot of game developers now, they are designing the game, they're developing the game around the loot boxes and microtransactions. Yeah. And to me, that to me, that just probably limits their creativity and their freedom as a game developer. And it's usually these mega publishers that are making them do that, like EA. You know, we all know EA is one of the most notorious. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, I, this is it's uh, that's just not right to de to design a game around these loot boxes and microtransactions simply because you're greedy and you want to make millions yeah. and millions and millions of dollars. It to me that is just not a good way to design a game at all. Well, there's some games that do it right. Like this is probably a bad example, but like Fortnite, for example, they yes. have they have microtransactions, but they don't help you in the game like everyone's yes. average they just like you, you can buy costumes or something so you can put the money in to customize your character but it's equal playing for everyone so that's that's pretty cool that you can do that um but that's probably not the best example because fortnite's fortnite but. yeah and you know that i'm completely fine with that you know i don't i don't have a problem with that because yeah. of the fact that they don't actually give you any benefit in the game and you don't have to buy them if you yeah, don't, you don't want have to. to you can still yeah. enjoy the game without putting extra money into it Right, exactly. So that's a to me that's a good business model for it, and I think that's one of the reason reasons why Epic Games is so successful and Fortnite is so successful because they found that perfect balance in that business model where to where yeah. people don't feel like they're being taken advantage of, they don't feel like it's unfair, they don't feel like they're being ripped off. So yeah, uh, Lo, how about you? What do you got to say about about this? No, I, I agree hundred percent. I think that loot boxes and and all of this stuff that they have, it's really just a greedy cash grab. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if I buy a game, I expect the whole game to be in that package. I don't want to have to download, you know, extra skins or any of that stuff. I should get it automatically. And I wouldn't mind paying, you know, an extra 10 bucks or whatever if the whole thing came uh, with the game. You know, there are some editions of games that, you know, I think of the Arkham, Arkham games. Yeah. Where it's like a special edition that all of the DLC comes with it and stuff. And... I tend to like buy those rather than buy the DLC. Yeah, they're smart with those, and they won't release those till like way later. So you gotta like wait, and it's like, man, everyone's already played this. They're talking about how great it is. Okay. Yeah, you gotta wait for the DLCs. Yeah, so I mean, I think that these loot boxes, I think it's just all a cash grab. I think it's greed on the part of the developers, and nothing pisses a gamer off more than microtransactions. Yeah. I mean, it's just me myself personally. I'm sure that you guys are on board with this. Is that it's it's the fastest way to piss off a gamer 
it's I like I don't even pick a game up if I know that it's full of microtransactions. For example, the Star Wars Battlefront, the 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 second part of it, I only played the um, campaign for it, and I didn't even want to mess with with the um, with the uh, online play for it because I knew that microtransactions were a big part of it, and so I just I put the game away and never played it again, which is a shame because the game is just is really fun. Yeah, but it just it just puts me off of it. Yeah. You know, you know, there's something wrong when you know the new Star Wars game that's coming out this year, uh, the Fallen Order or whatever it's called. You know, there's something wrong when EA has to come out and say we will not have any microtransactions or loot boxes in this game. <laughs> you know, there's something wrong when yeah, a big exactly. company has to come yeah. out and say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly they know they know people hate these things, but they don't give a damn because they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars off this stuff. Yeah, you know, you reminded me of another um, company that was like shamelessly saying that they don't care what we say. There's still going to be microtransactions in the game. The game ex is escapes me right now, though. Was it Destiny? It might have been. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've I've heard that too. Yeah, that that rings a bell, but I don't remember what game or, or what uh, publisher or developer it was. Okay, so we're gonna get into a couple of uh, cons to to physical media, and the first one is that the game, and this could apply to any any kind of physical media, the game could be damaged beyond repair and uh, no longer usable. So, you know, uh, with cartridge based games. I feel like it's not as much of an issue as it is with disc based games because cartridge cartridge game cartridges are pretty resilient. I mean, yeah. I've had cartridges that I know have been sitting in a box in somebody's moldy ass basement for you know <laughs> 10, 20 years, and I pull the cartridge out, clean it up, and it works perfectly fine, right? Um so, you know, card if you know how to clean a cartridge based game properly and, and take care of it. I would say, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I would say probably 95% of the time I can get a cartridge-based game to work um, just by cleaning it really well. Disc, Disc-based disc games obviously have their own challenges in that they get scratched. And what a lot of people don't realize is that the data on a disc is actually underneath the label on top. So, and that's why if a disc gets scratched on the bottom, it most of the time will still work fine unless they're really deep scratches and, and you know, you can get them, uh, you can get them buffed out in a uh, in a disc resurfacing machine. But if it if that disc gets scratched on top of the the label really bad, you might as well forget it. That that thing is pretty much shot. So you know there's some challenges there with stuff getting damaged. Uh, and I guess you could say that's sort of a pro to digital games is that you don't really have to worry about them getting damaged or broken in that sense. Um, so uh, uh, Carlos, you want or Los, you want to jump in on this one? Yeah, sure. No, I think it's a double-edged sword too, though, because you know, if your hard drive crashes, all your games are gone. I mean, you might yeah. be able to redownload them if yeah. they're still available, but I mean, your your you know hard hard drive can definitely crash. And no, as far as the physical media goes, yes, absolutely, the games can be damaged. You can step on a disc, if, you know, if it's lying on the ground, uh, you can uh, lose it and stuff, and and. It's, it's, you know, really it's, it depends on how well you take care of your games. Obviously, not everyone takes as, as good care of games as, as collectors, somebody who goes out and actively buys the games and, you know, stores them, displays them properly. And, you know, not everybody is like that. You know, there are households with kids in them and, and they don't take care of their games. And, you know, many of my friends, especially, they have um, games that are just won't work anymore, that they're scratched. The kid has spilled juice on it or they have peanut butter on them. And it's just, it's, it's a travesty really, but um, it's just, it, it's, it is one of those cons of the physical media world in which you can't really ensure that the game is going to be uh, in, in good shape down the line. The other thing is that, you know, these games have a shelf life, you know, it's like you said, in that moldy ass basement, um, you know, if they're not stored properly, if, you know, you have something going on, it, it, you know, God forbid you have a fire in your house. Fire or that physical, flood, your game room floods. Yeah, your game room floods <laughs> and you're, you know, you have your damaged media there. So I think it's, it is a big con for it, but there are also cons with, with the physical, with the uh, digital side in which 
your hard drive can can crash and you know everything gets erased or you know there's a power surge and everything gets fried in your system or whatever but but yeah no i totally relate to that how about you guys robert wiss uh yeah i mean there's obviously um that aspect of it but I, i'm with you as far as the cartridges i you know i don't i can't think of many cartridges i haven't been able to get to work in the time that i've been collecting mm-hmm. um but yeah i guess it is it is a small con um the disc based games are probably the most pain in the nuts to get going if they're they're messed up and find a lot of those that look like somebody played street hockey with but yeah uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't Coast know. Yeah, I I would take that though. I I would take that con over all the other, uh, you know, other crap that goes along with digital media for sure. So, yeah, I have a lot of games still from when I was a kid. And you know, when you're a kid, you don't really take the best care of your games. Like I have a game for the PS One that I have so many great memories of playing. It. It's like a Star Wars game, and it's on the shelf. But I took so bad care of it that that the game is unplayable. And it's like a pretty expensive game nowadays. And it's like, ah, oh, why did I not take care of this? And you can't fix it. It's like so deep and it's it's frustrating. What game is that? Uh, Star Wars Jedi Power Battles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a fun game, game, but I don't know if it's still fun. I have like so much nostalgia with it, but I can't pop it in because it's unplayable. Mm-hmm. Well, that game is so hard, guys. I, I remember that game. It, it's so much fun, though. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I actually uh, got a copy of that on the Dreamcast. Recently. Yeah, it's in uh, your pickup videos yeah. maybe for June, I, I think. Yeah, yeah, I haven't played it yet, but the game looks like a lot of fun. It really does. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, that's that's a that is a con to physical media, but uh, but like you said, Wes, you know, that's a con that I agree with you. That's a con that I would take over most of the cons with 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 digital media. Um, so yeah, anything else y'all want to add on that one? Another kind of funny thing is, uh, like, okay, so if you have digital media, and if he, uh, like, like, if you guys are like all the other gamers out there who have just these massive collections, I have stuff all over my room, and sometimes I can't find, you know, what I want to find, and and that sucks because, you know, I was I was modding an old Xbox. You know, you can mod those and put all the games on them and, and do all of that stuff. But you need a cart, you need a disc to do it. It's uh, Agent Under Fire will work, and also um, I think it's Mech Assault that works. But I had those games, I had them, but I just couldn't find them because I have so much stuff everywhere, and I, you know, I I just couldn't find them. And so I had to go out to the thrift store and buy myself a copy of Splinter Cell, and and so I could use to mod this game to to mod the Xbox with, and so that's kind of a funny little um, con t- uh, to it. So it's like if you don't have your stuff organized, and I can see that you guys have all of your stuff organized, uh, would, <laughs> but me, I'm kind of like scattered uh, all over the place. Well, our, <laughs> our game room is so small that like it gets messy really quick, and like we'll stack games that like we're gonna do an episode on, and then like we go to find the game to get like B roll. And we're like, oh, where do we put the game? And it's like, we're looking <laughs> on the shelf, and it's, ah, it's like, it's you can get unorganized so quick, and like, it's frustrating when you can't find what you're trying to find, and you're like, I know we have this. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can't tell right now, but uh, my game room is a train wreck. If I yeah. were to move the camera, yeah, it's it's a mess. I really gotta get cleaned up. It's uh, whew, yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad, especially now that I've got my uh, my guitar my new guitar I bought in my amp in here that I've been playing around with. That's yeah. Stuff's kind of scattered all over the place, but, uh, but yeah, those, you know, those are all great points. The next topic kind of, kind of piggybacks off that a little bit. And it's another physical con in that your games can of course be stolen or lost, uh, and low. So go ahead and start us off on that one. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, if you have dubious friends over to your house and, they see a game that they want. Next thing you know, it's gone from your collection, and that is not cool. First of all, don't have any friends like that. Yeah. Um, get them, get them out of your life. <laughs> and uh, secondly, um, they can get lost and stolen. Um, I think we touched on it a little bit before. It's like it's really, it's it's really a pain when you can't find a game that you need, and you know you you're thinking to yourself, how can I be so dumb? How can I not know where this is? Am I gonna have to go and buy it again? You know, and it's just it's a it's a pain. It's a pain in the butt. But I mean, it is a physical con, 
It's one that it, I think is minimal, mainly because um, I don't. I just don't have any shady people in my life like yeah. that that would come over and steal my games. And if they did, they would be out of my life really quick. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know the the but but the trying to find the games though is is a, a, a one of the cons that I deal with most commonly with these games. Um, but but yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, like you, uh, Los, I, I don't really surround myself in people that I that I worry about stealing either. So it's not really an issue that I have to worry about. I'm sure it's the same with you guys. You don't yeah. you know, if you know, yeah. if you think somebody's going to steal something, you're not going to let them in your house, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm running into a, a similar issue to what you were saying in that. So I'm looking at my GameCube collection right now. Right. And it's in alphabetical order. OK. And for some reason my copy of Luigi's Mansion is not there. And I know that I had a black label copy of that game. I've got a player's choice copy, but I know I had a black label copy and it's not there. I have no idea where it's at. So I don't know if I lost it. I, you know, I don't know what happened or if it's maybe mixed in somewhere out of order. Oh, yeah. you know? So, uh, but you know, obviously if I can't find it, I'm going to have to buy it again because I'm going for a complete collection. But uh but yeah, it's just really weird, you know. Sometimes, sometimes games can turn up missing, you know. It just it happens, and you well, know, what's, you... what's frustrating about having like a giant collection is, like, say you have a people over for a small get together or a party, yeah. someone could easily take one game, and you won't notice for months. When you, and then when you go looking for that game, you're like, "What the heck? Where did it go?" And you, you yeah. don't know that someone stole it. You think you lost it, maybe. And another big thing is like when you let people borrow games. They might not actually they'll, they'll do it on accident usually but they'll keep it and and then you forget that you let them borrowed it and it's like where did that game go and it's it's tough yeah yeah you know i'm glad you mentioned loaning out games because i mean that's another thing that could happen with physical media you could loan a game out to somebody and it could get stolen from them or they could lose it or it could get damaged and then uh, you forget you gave it to them and yeah yeah, yeah. here's here's a, a funny little example for you um so my nephew, this was a this was a long time ago, man. I had um, I don't I don't know if you guys watched the Dragon Ball series or not, um, but I had the first season of the original Dragon Ball on DVD, the big box DVD set, yeah. for the first season, and I loaned it to my nephew, and uh, you know I kept asking him, you know, are you done? Can you know can I get that back if you're done and all this stuff? And he kept avoiding the question, and eventually I found out that. Apparently, one of his cats like knocked over a glass of Coke or something all oh, over it, and destroyed it, and he was just he he did not want to tell me that that happened. You know, he, you know, he was just he was devastated by that. And when I found out about it, I'm like, dude, it's it's perfectly fine. It's not a big deal. You know, shit happens. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. And his his mom ended up buying me another copy and everything. I didn't ask. I mean, I didn't. You know, I, they didn't have to do that, but yeah. you know, she she went ahead and did that. But I mean, you know, that's something that can happen with physical media when you loan it out. So that's that's sort of another con. You got to you're trusting somebody with that item. And, you know, it, no matter how much you trust that person, shit happens. Actually, happens. Happen, you know, so it's if you, let, risk. If you let someone borrow it. That's not like a huge collector or like way into video games. They're not going to handle it as well as, you know, right. you probably would. So yeah. like the game might get scratched easier or they'll leave it out like in the sun. And you're like, oh, dude, this is yellow. What mm -hmm. happened? I don't know. I just had it on my show. We, I used to, we used to have parties at, um, at my, uh, wife's house, uh, back then she was my girlfriend, but we would play, um, all of the WCW NWO games on the N64 nice. yes. and, uh, we'd have four controllers going and stuff. And, and we would have people come over people I didn't know. And, uh, I'd like a dummy one time I left the console and all my games over there overnight and I went home. And, uh, you know, some people came over, sure enough, um, a couple of my games were missing. And one of those was um, uh, WCW versus NWO, one of our most favorite wrestling games. And uh, my uh, copy of GoldenEye was missing. And I was just beyond livid because I didn't know who took it. And, you know, the game was gone. And there was no way I can, I can get it back. You know, down the line, I did was able to obtain copies of those games. But you but, already had it. And it's like, I don't want to buy this again. But yeah yeah dude, that's frustrating but the games are so dang good that you need to have them in your collection yeah. and, right. you know that that's a big con i think yep absolutely um so the next topic and we have kind of, <laughs> we've, we've kind of touched on this a little bit and it's a physical con but to be honest 
it's not a con that's good that that's going to affect everybody it just depends on your situation and that's that uh physical games they take up room they take up space they take up storage etc and depending on your situation that may or may not be a con uh so robert and wes start us off on that one yeah i mean that's always you know uh you know something to consider i think you know don't collect more than what you have space yeah, for that's... um but yeah it does <laughs> get to a point you know where you know i mean we we like uh, uh, VHS tapes too. So, you know, had to uh, customize some shelving for that type of stuff. And, uh, moving's probably more of a pain in the ass, I would say. Um, yeah. but yeah, it kind of sucks running out of space because, you know, we have like an arcade one up and there's other arcade one ups that we want to get and like more games we want to get, but we just don't have the space for it in the game room. And it's like, it kind of limits what you can buy and what you can get. So that kind of sucks, but it also is good for your wallet. So there's a pro and a con to it, I guess. Yeah. How about you, Lars? Yes. No, I agree a hundred percent. You know, I've ran, I've actually ran out of shelf space. Okay. And so I have games stacked everywhere. Things that I haven't seen for decades. And like, I'll, I'll go months and I find a bag and, and, and look at the games inside and go, geez, when did I get this? It's like, it's a nice surprise to have, but <laughs> it's like, I ran out of space. I can't collect anymore. I'm actually going to, start giving some stuff away because you know i i just don't have any space for it i don't have any room for it and, and it's like you guys there are arcade machines that i want to buy but i don't have any space for them i already yeah, have a yeah, they take up so much room yeah and it's like it's like you want to have all these cool things in your room but it's like my my little man cave is is is, is small really and I, I i don't have room for all of that stuff and and i think that that is a big con because there's a lot of collectors collectors out there, um, especially you know on YouTube and stuff. There was one video that came out. Um, they were talking about uh, do do we really need all this stuff, you know? And there were collectors talking about selling their collections off, and you know only keeping the games that they want. Um, they don't really need all this stuff because of the digital marketplace and stuff. And you know I can I can totally relate to that. Um, I, you know, my wife calls me a hoarder, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, that I hoard these things. And, you know, I, I think of that and I think that that's a negative connotation. Um, but at the same time, these things bring me joy, you yeah. know, and there's, there's nothing that could be wrong with that. But yes, space is a huge issue for any collector with a big collection. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I'm running into that right now. I mean, my game room is I mean, it's it's just about maxed out. I mean, you can see behind me, and I and I see, you know, Robert and Wes and your background. You've got stuff just stacked, you yeah, know, stack on stack. Yeah, right. I mean, so you know, in, in my game room, I think it's like um, I want to say it's twelve by twelve. The the dimensions of the room and the ceiling. You can probably see behind me because because I'm in a double wide. The ceiling um, starts off low and it it kind of goes up at an angle. So I had to take that into consideration whenever I kind of position my bookshelves and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, space is when you're a big collector, space is, is a constant issue. You know, not everybody is fortunate enough to have an entire freaking finished basement that they can turn into a huge man cave yeah. or game room, which one day I would I would love to do that. Uh, you know, I want to get I want to get some of the one up arcades, but I just don't have room for them in here. So if I bought them they would just sit in the box and storage or something until I have room and can build them, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's a con depending on your situation. You know, like I said, people that have huge basements, it may not be a con for them because they have plenty of space. And, uh, uh, Robert, when you talked about moving, man, you are not kidding. When you have to move all this stuff, it is a pain in the ass. Yeah. And then you're trying to be like super careful with everything. So that's yes. damaged or ruined. And it's like, Oh man, yeah just plan yeah. on never moving <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i went through that very recently when we when we moved to, to the double wide here you know I, I having the box up everything and i can't even tell you how many boxes there were it, it was insane and then the boxes you know if you do one of the large boxes like you buy at walmart or whatever or a, a large tote and you fill that sucker up with games dude it gets heavy it's so heavy yeah yeah it gets heavy and you don't want to drop it you know so so yeah, I mean that is another con, you know, the whole moving aspect of it. If you, if you ever have to move, we're gonna get into a couple of uh, a couple of digital pros here, and the 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 first pro that I've got listed for digital games, and this is not always the case, but uh, 
in most cases with digital games, you don't have to leave the house to get them. So, you know, if, I mean, that is a convenience factor that you don't have to spend the gas money to drive to a store or wait on Amazon to deliver the game to you or whatever. So that, I mean, there's sort of a convenience factor to that, that I could see being a pro for a pro for some people. So uh, Lois, you want to start us off on that one? No, it's definitely a pro. If you want a game and basically you can buy any game uh, on a digital marketplace. Well, except the ones that they took off, obviously, but you know, it's the immediacy of that adds to the convenience, and that is always a good thing. You know, you don't always have the time to go to the store and buy the game. Maybe the game is out in the store. It's never out in, yeah, in, never in out. the digital landscape. So I think that is a, one of the biggest, biggest pros that um, this digital, the digital downloads have for us gamers. Absolutely, Robert Wiss. How about you guys? I mean, yeah, it's it's. <sighs> I think that convenience factor is, is the main thing. I mean, the there's been you know some games that we because of wanting to get a review out, work schedules, things like that, that we will take that plunge. Um, like you know the the immediate aspect of it um, is really nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, really, and like I said, that's why I said it's it's sometimes a pro because it's really kind of situational like you like you just said you know if your schedule if you're really busy and you just don't have time to go get it and you need you need it for a youtube video or whatever you know you you at least have that option um but it's not really i mean it's not a pro for everybody because some people don't they don't mind waiting to get it physically yeah. or or you know going out to like me personally I like to get out of the house sometimes, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes I don't mind driving to a Best Buy or a GameStop or whatever to, uh, to get a copy, a physical copy of a new game, just cause I want to get out of the house and, you know, drive around a little bit, listen to yeah. the music on the way or some YouTube videos or whatever. So, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's a situational pro that may or may not apply to people depending on, on what they've got going on. I, I would say. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything but else? The thing, Go ahead. The other thing with that though is that is that like sometimes your internet connection really sucks, or you know there are still families out there, believe it or not, with no internet access. Yeah. So that whole world is not available to them. And, mm -hmm. you know, they wouldn't be enjoying the pros or the cons anyways with yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But you know, like for example, my internet connection here isn't really that good, so the downloads take a while, and and you know. For what it's worth, I, I think it is the convenience factor is is, is the, the biggest pro for that. Yep, yep, I agree. Uh, so the next one is it, it kind of piggybacks off that topic a little bit, and it's another digital pro, and it's that the game can actually, in in almost all cases, can be purchased sooner than the physical copy. And and what I mean by that is, um, with most digital games, you can purchase them usually midnight the the day that they're released whereas you would have to unless uh gamestop you know unless gamestop's doing a midnight release or whatever you'd have to wait until the next day when the store is open back up to, yeah. to go get the game so uh uh let's see uh robert and wes uh you got anything to to say about that one well i think like with most digital things you can pre-order it so like when like it goes live it just instantly starts downloading and then you can get yep. it and say it releases at midnight you can wake up and the game is ready to be played just yep. put your playstation in sleep mode or something and at the store i know you can pre-order it too but then you got to wait you know for gamestop to open i know walmart's 24 hours so that's pretty nice we've yep. gone at midnight and gotten games at walmart like wait in line but yeah it's 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 kind of a convenience thing because you can just wake up and have the game ready to be played the next morning yeah i mean it is it, it is nice but uh i like sleep uh, too, so I, you know, I don't, I don't really mind going to the store in the morning if need be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. How about you, Los? Well, I think I think that that those are all very good points. And the uh, the other thing is that, like, okay, so you know, the whole thing with all these mini systems that are coming out, the Turbo Graphics Mini, the Sega uh, Genesis Classic, um, you know, you can get those games digitally. You know, th those are all available now. But what is the selling point for these? for these machines that are coming out. It's that you have this little mini console, it's cute. You know, you can take pictures of, of it with the big console and, and like kind of compare and contrast to it. Um, but I think that's that's one point that like you miss with having the digital downloads. 
And like for me, I have all the games that are on the on the Genesis Mini, the Turbo Graphics 16. I have all of those games. Why am I bu even bothering buying this thing when I can just pop in a version of the Sega Classics Edition for the PS4? It, it's because of that physical little cute mini console that I want to have for my collection. You know, I typically buy two versions of these systems so that I can mod one, add all the games to it. And, then and you know, and, and abuse it, right? And then the other one, I'll just keep just unopened, so that you know, I could have it there as a, as a collection as a collection piece. But um, just back to what you were saying is that the the whole thing with the the digital downloads and stuff, it's like it is a huge con to be able to have access to the game right away. And I think that. Um, sometimes in this busy world, and it's like you said, you know, we have things going on. We have, you know, people to see, places to places to go. We want to sleep, or we want to just spend time with with loved ones, or whatever. You don't have time to go to the Best Buys. You don't have time to go to the Game Stops, and you're not guaranteed that the game is going to be there too, because yeah, a lot of people love playing video games and love uh, picking these things up. So that I think that is a, a a worthy pro to the digital marketplace. All right. Awesome, man. Yeah. Excellent point. Um, all right. So the next, so the next two pros for digital games, they kind of go hand in hand. So I'm just going to combine them in the one to save time here. And we have touched on them a little bit. So uh, with, digital games in most cases you don't have to worry about losing them or them being stolen because of the fact that they're usually tied to an account that you can get access back to in most cases and just re-download the games yeah. um, and then you don't really have to worry about them being damaged uh, or worry about them stop working unless somebody releases a patch for the game that actually breaks the game instead of fixing yeah. it because that does happen sometimes um, so yeah. I would say that is a uh, a pro for uh, for digital games. Uh, Los, you want to take that one? Yeah, no, I just think think back to the old days of the Xbox 360 when I I downloaded a copy of uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Well, when the generation hopped and the Xbox One came out, I was like, oh, I wonder if I can download this game if if it'll still remember me, you know. And so I did, and I, I can play that game on the Xbox One. Oh, that's awesome. And, and you know, it's it's one of these, it's a pro. It's definitely a pro. Absolutely. How about you, Robert Wiss? Yeah, I totally think it's a pro, too, because you don't have to worry about, you know, besides, like, losing power or internet access or someone hacking your stuff, it's mm -hmm. just all convenience. It doesn't take up much space. You can easily go in and just, you know the game's going to be there. You're not worried about it being scratched or something and it's it's pretty cool to just be able to you know pick up your console take it somewhere plug it in and have access to thousands of games that you've downloaded over the years yeah yep until they shut the servers down and your hard drive fries and you can't get those games yeah, anymore. Then, then they're gone. <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean it's 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 a pro but it also is an inevitable con that you have to worry about because hard drives are not going to last forever servers are not going to last forever yeah, it will all the I feel like all the digital pros right now will eventually become cons. That's the problem. Yeah, and you know what? This may be a, a sort of a controversial thing to say, but it makes me glad that there are people out there that that make copies of games online and, and pirate them online because of the fact that yeah, it's it's not legal, but they are creating a digital copy of that game and putting it out on the world wide web so that it is at least preserved in some way. Yes. So although some people, you know, do look down upon that and, and find, you know, and find it immorally illegal at the same time, they're actually doing a good thing because they're helping preserve these games that could just completely disappear. So if it's like, you know, if they're not doing that, the games could disappear forever. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of a weird, it's a controversial thing, you know. It's not yeah. something a lot of people talk about, you know. If the companies were to do a better job of preserving the games, then there wouldn't have to be anyone doing that. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, one thing that um, Xbox One has been really kind of touting is that the new Gears of War game. You can play it first on their Xbox Live Game Pass. I don't have it, but I'm like, man, I, I wish I had that Game Pass. I would. I want to play the new Gears of War. 
And I, you know, I, I can't do that, but that is definitely a pro that I mm -hmm. see with the downloads. So you were talking about game pass. I just want to kind of throw it out there that, um, I do think game pass is a good thing. It's a great deal. I mean, 10 bucks a month and you get access to over a hundred games, a lot of which are brand new games and yeah, you yeah. can download them. Yeah. I mean, you can actually download them to the console and you don't have to be connected to the internet to play them. So uh, game pass is actually a, a really good deal. Um, and, you know, for people that don't have the money to to buy games brand new all the time, Game Pass is great, you know. Yeah. The digital streaming age is upon us, right? I mean, it's coming. It's going to be inevitable. It's going to be – I think it's going to be five to ten years before it really takes off because technology is just not there yet. Internet connections are just not there yet. But uh, it is coming. Game streaming is going to be a huge thing. I mean, just look at what happened with the music industry, the mu the, the movie industry they're all moving to streaming with Netflix and Spotify and all those yeah. other platforms, subscription based models mm -hmm. with, with streaming. It's all moving in that direction. And the game industry is, is going to be the last ones to come on board. And to be honest with you, it terrifies me. And there's a couple of different reasons that it terrifies me besides all the other cons to digital media that we've discussed that could also apply to streaming. Um, you've also got the fact that if you do not have internet, you just can't do it. You can't stream yeah. the games, you know, and not only that, but you have to have a good Internet connection or you're going to have to worry about things like latency, um, you know, the game freezing. And, and you know, if, yeah. you're, if your Internet goes out in the middle of playing a game, I mean, does it get saved? What yeah, happens? It, you know, it doesn't save. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of issues that, that can come with that. But here's what I see as the biggest issue for video game streaming. And we're already seeing this right now with uh movies and tv shows and that's that everybody is going to want to have their own streaming service yes. with their own yeah. monthly yeah with their own monthly payment you know so you're going to have ubisoft nintendo sony microsoft oh, they're all going to want to have their own subscription model that you have to pay for yeah and it's that adds up quick if you because you're going to want to you, people like games from different developers so you're going to want to pay that subscription man it's like Man, I'm paying like seventy bucks a month to play these games instead, of, and I don't actually own them. Like, yep. what is yeah. going on? Yeah, and it's it's going to be a mess. It's going to I mean the the market is going to become fragmented, kind of like it is now. I mean, you we're seeing issues with this right now with uh, Netflix. You know, Disney they're pulling away and they're doing their own streaming yeah. service. They're getting ready yeah. to launch yeah. their own streaming service, and and you know, uh, one of the bad things that came out of that is the amazing Marvel netflix shows like daredevil and the punisher and uh jessica jones and you know some of them are not that great but but most of them are amazing and the and the reason the the reason that netflix had to cancel all those is because disney wanted to pull away and do their own thing and that i could see that that same thing i could see happening uh in the gaming industry too with all these different subscription based models with with streaming so the whole thing I, i'm not looking forward to it personally um, but uh, who wants to jump in on this one and, and talk about your thoughts on it? Yeah, it's totally, uh, it's, it's definitely not going to be a good situation. Yeah. Um, I, I think you hit on all the, the relevant points there. I just think it's a, it's a bad direction. And I think what it does is it, um, you know, I know I'm a big fan of TV series and shows and my scope of what I watch now has been severely limited because I'm not going to pay for all those services. So I think that's going to be the same way for gamers. I just don't think, I mean, as far as new stuff, I, I know per, I, I, there's no way I'm going to subscribe to a bunch of those different yeah. things. And going back to like the internet stuff, like if you were to play online and see your internet connection is terrible and you're trying to play like, um, like battlefront or something and you keep lagging, and you're playing with friends online it's like dude this isn't even fun i'm not enjoying this and you're not you're not going to want to play it anymore and it's and it kind of sucks it you lose people with that and it's not even the game's fault it's the internet's fault and it's like mm -hmm. yeah that's that's an excellent point i mean not everybody has a good internet connection and not everybody can stream you know just just really at high um mbps and stuff and so I, I think that's definitely a con, and I, like you, man, I am terrified about all of having to pay all these different um, services and stuff. And you know, these new consoles are are coming out, and there's like there's no disk drive. There's you know, there's just one hard drive that you have. And um, to me, I, that's just it puts me off. I'm still gonna buy them 
just because I'm a nerd and you know I like all this kind of stuff, but it's it's it, it it's terrifying to me. I don't want to have to pay a subscription fee to Konami and to Capcom and to Ubisoft, and then on top of that, I'd have to pay for HBO. Yeah, and it's just gonna get out of control, and I feel like it's gonna happen really quick, and it's and it's yeah. just gonna be like, okay, I'm just gonna go back to all my old physical games and say, screw all this new stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it's you know, it's 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 it goes both ways, right? I mean, it's good to have your your games on a digital version, but it would be nice if you could have both, you know. Yeah. If you could have a digital yeah, version, and a physical one. Because convenience is really nice. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And and another thing with streaming is it, in Los, what you were talking about, kind of made me think about this too, is the fact that the fact that it's not just music movies tv shows and games that are going to be separately they're all going to have their own streaming services so if you want to listen to music you're going to have to have some for music you're going to have to have some for movies and tv shows you're going to yeah. have to have some for video games and that cost is going to continue to just you know stack up the more of these subscriptions that you have to have and and you've you've slowly started to notice like on netflix they keep raising their price for their monthly subscription yeah like, yeah mm -hmm. dude what and it's it you know it's I mean this goes uh, this goes with cable and and like direct TV as well. But that type of stuff when you pay for it, it's guaranteeing and locking in their stream and it's a stream of revenue. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be consuming that content. You know, I've cut a lot of that stuff out of my monthly budget because it's like well I paid for it for two months and didn't flip it on once, so yeah. it's got to go. And you know if you fragment all that stuff out, you're not going to be using all those sources of media. Yep. That's a, that's yep, another absolutely. thing that is that, like, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, we when we sit down to watch a Netflix movie or whatever, we'll spend, like, a good hour <laughs> just find one. cycling through everything. And, you know, it's like, okay, what are we going to watch? I don't know. What do you want to watch? All right. So, I mean, we're really indecisive when it comes to that. And that's just because of the of the um, vast number of choices out there. You know? Know because you can yeah you can just scroll nope. through netflix or scroll and it's just like dude i don't know what to watch like there's so many options and it's kind of overwhelming but if you just have like a dvd collection it's like mm -hmm. oh there's only 50 movies here and okay mm -hmm. let's watch this it's one of my favorites yeah yeah yep excellent point excellent point so all right we're gonna move into the outro of the video here and we're gonna go through each each uh, person's final thoughts on just this topic in general, anything you want to say about it, just your, your final overall thoughts on it. And uh, Los, uh, start us off on that. I think, um, you know, I am a physical copy guy. Yeah. You know, that will never change for me. I just, I think that I'm, I'm in love with the artwork. I like holding the, I like holding it in my hand. Um, I, I certainly am on team physical. However, I do feel that digital copies and digital media, they all have a place um, in my collection as well. And I'm sure that it is like that. I, I do favor physical copies, but I, I do like the conveniency of, of uh, the digital downloading and streaming and all of that stuff. And I think uh, it's, you know, we're, as, as we, as time marches on, you know, things are gonna evolve and we don't know if it's gonna be the same uh, as it is today. I mean, things could be better. They could be worse. I just think that um, to have an open mind about these things, I think is, is is key to it. Personally, I will always love and cherish my physical copies. But you know, I'm I'm excited to see what's going to come down the pipeline too. So, yeah, I totally agree right. with everything you said. Uh, I I'm obviously team physical all the way, but like the convenience of uh, digital and like being able to like stream stuff immediately. But I just, the whole experience that goes with physical is just, it's not, it's priceless. Like, that's why I love collecting vinyl and stuff. It's like you listen to the album the way it was meant to be listened to it. You're not just like on shuffle or like you, you buy a physical game and it comes with like the artwork. It comes with an actual manual. It's, it's tangible. You can put it on display. It's, I just love physical, tangible things. I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, big picture. You know, I think when we step back, you know, when we're all a lot older and look look back at the valley, um, I think this microwave society we're in, it, what it really does is it's quick and it's convenient. But I do think it's going to limit uh, the amount of legendary status things that exist. Um, 
I don't think so from from music. I'm a, we're big music fans. You think about the the odds and the current generation we're in. The fact that how many albums do you look back and say, "Oh, that album is an all time classic." And I think it's because it's so you listen to it, it streams, and when it falls out of the shuffle, it's gone type of yeah. thing. You don't listen to it as much as like when you had Fleetwood Mac Rumors on vinyl. Uh, yeah. I think that, that that's going to happen a lot with a lot of this stuff. Is I think that you're gonna that you're not going to look back and, and have the games like your Super Mario Brothers three that are just up there on a pedestal as all time classics because of we're overstimulated. The stuff it just comes yeah. in and goes out really quick. Um, so I mean that's why physical media I think is just so important. I, I think it that there's the whole your connection with all that stuff is because of the art that's involved, the experience that's involved. The convenience is nice, but I think I think it uh, leads to just kind of quick half baked things that get put out there really quick, and uh, and then you and then you forget about them yep. like in a year. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So, just like you guys, I'm also on team physical, but at the same time, I do see the benefit of the digital the digital age that we're in, and I'm not against it. I just I see some issues with it that I think need to really be worked out and ironed out a little bit more before we start moving more and more into that territory. But I will say this, right? Two, th two things. Okay. People like us, uh, people like us, I think are doing a great thing because we're helping to keep physical media alive, yeah. especially getting on YouTube and sharing our love of physical media. You yeah. know, it, it's really helping to keep that alive. And, you know, if you have kids and you, you introduce that love of physical media to your kids and really get them ingrained in that, then, you know, the hope is that they'll do the same thing with their kids. And so, you know, what people like us are doing, especially on YouTube and things like that, I think we're doing a, a great thing in helping to keep that alive. Cause I do think, I think no matter what happens, I think physical media needs to stay alive in some way, yeah. even if it's small, it needs to stay alive. Go ahead, go ahead, Robert. I've noticed like ever since we started the channel that like some of our friends and stuff, we're getting them back into gaming, back into physical collecting. And, like, <laughs> That's sweet. Totally they totally like stopped doing that when they like became older and they're like, Oh man, I missed this. And now they're like going, you know, buying GameCube games. They're like, Oh, I want a Wii now. And it's like, it's cool that we're like yeah, bringing cool. more people into the physical aspect because they've, you know, kind of gone down the mainstream and it's all digital. And so it's really cool to just bring people into the physical world. Yeah, it really is. And I think, uh, I think one of the most, it's just my opinion. And I think y'all probably agree with this. I think one of the most important aspects of, of just this whole thing is reconnecting with our childhood and our, you know, our teenage years, reconnecting wow. to those times, because, you know, when you get, when you become an adult and you have all these damn responsibilities and all these bills and all the stress that comes with adult life, it's really nice to reconnect to the time when you didn't have to worry about all that stuff to, you know, the time when you had all, all this, all this stuff that you had when you were a kid that you had a lot of fun with and, and really get those nostalgic feelings back and really bring back those memories that you had when you were a kid. I think that's really important for people to connect with their childhood because y'all have probably noticed this about people. What I've noticed about people is that um, people, when they, when they get into their adult years, people that are more, uh, they reconnect with their childhood and kind of um, are more childlike in a way, you know, um, I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this people. I've noticed that people that do that tend to not age as quickly. You know what I mean? Have yeah. y'all you, you noticed that? Yeah. 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 I, think, I think there's a, you know, speaking to that, I think you make a great point. And I think it's, I think it's, I found people that stay connected to the arts seem to stay young. If that makes any, any sense and young at heart and they can relate to younger people better. I feel like, um, where some people that just zone out and live in that world, you know, we all have the stress, we all have jobs and all that stuff, but they just kind of become drone like, yeah. So mm -hmm. to say it's just a day to day thing. And you know, this, I think the arts help bridge generations, bridge gaps. And they, they make, you know, if you're an artist, it doesn't matter what age you understand other people's side of, of, of yeah, whatever they're into you can connect. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. I mean, these are things that bring us joy and these are things that add to the quality of life of, of, of yeah. many people. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's just people that don't have these things in their lives are just, you know, 
their lives would be better if they did, you know? Yep, absolutely. And, you know, um, so, so the second thing that I wanted to kind of bring up in my final thoughts. So I think it's very important um, if if people have the money and they want to and they're able to. I think it's very important to really support companies that help keep this stuff alive. Like, for example, limited run games, super rare games, East oh. Asia Soft. Uh, yeah, some of these gaming companies that are taking these digital games and putting out a physical copy of these oh, games wow. or, oh, it. yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And that's why, you know, I, I heavily support those companies as much as I can and try to buy, you know, as many of their releases that I'm able to afford because they're keeping this, they're helping to keep this stuff alive, man. And it's it's really awesome. Uh, what do you guys you want to say anything about that? I don't know. I think I, I totally think that, that uh, all those uh, strict, all those websites that are doing that or businesses, um, it's, it's amazing. It's they're doing such a great deed. It's incredible. I think they're really the angels, of, the angels of the industry guys. I mean, yeah. These guys are doing it really good. They're doing, they're handling the product with care. Yes. And you know, these limited run games that are coming out, they're phenomenal. Yeah. You know? yeah they the package are great. Like it's, they put time into it. They're not just like half ass in it. And it's like, okay, this is awesome. Now I can actually own this amazing game in my collection. Yeah. Yes, like uh, Robert West, I'm sure you guys, uh, one that probably pops into your mind immediately is probably Axiom Verge, right? Oh, yep. yeah, absolutely. That I love that game. Yeah, yeah. That, that is a fantastic game. So, yeah, I mean, and, and not just the companies like Limited Run Games and all those, but also the companies that come out with the clone consoles, too. I mean, they're, oh, they're yeah. doing a good thing as well, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, the Retrons and, and things like that, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. So it's all, all these companies that do this, you know, I, I really hope that they that they keep doing it even as we move further and further into the digital age. I hope they continue to do that. Um, and here's here's the great thing. Right. Even as we and I, I was thinking about this the other day, even, even as we move further and further into the uh, into the digital age, they're still in for most games that they can get the rights to and things like that. They can still go back to some of the older consoles that have digital marketplaces like you know the xbox 360 things like that they could conceivably still go back to those older consoles and continue to release physical games for those older consoles yeah, if, if they wanted to i mean just look at what they're doing right now they're releasing um uh, uh limited run games they're doing a bunch of star wars games have y'all seen that yeah yeah yeah. Seen that. So cool. yeah yeah so i mean it's just it's really awesome so you know, that, that's my, my two big final thoughts is people like us are doing a great thing. Companies like that are doing a great thing to help keep physical media alive as we move further and further into this kind of scary uh, digital age that we're moving into. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So uh, before we move on to uh, to shout outs to you guys, do you all have anything else you want to add to your uh, final thoughts? Uh, no, I just uh, it's been a lot of fun and uh, enjoyed spending the, the Sunday morning with you guys. Yeah, it's, it's a great topic. Yeah, so I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. It really means a lot that you're taking time out of, out of your day, especially you, Los, having to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, man. You know, you're, no you're dude, you're you're a trooper. I really appreciate you doing that. You know, time zones they can cause some problems with with stuff like this. So I appreciate yeah. you, you know, waking up early and, and doing this. It's been a great discussion, guys. I mean, this. Honestly, I, we could probably talk about this topic all day long and go into yeah. even more detail yeah, about it. Dive deep and like very specific. Oh yeah, it's it's yeah. one of those topics like it just comes up in conversation like usually daily, and it's like, dude, physical, mm -hmm. digital. What side are you on, and why? It really, yeah. it really does. It really does. So thank you guys again for joining me, and so let's uh, let's get into uh, some shout outs real quick. So. Los, uh, why don't you tell everybody again where they can find you on uh, YouTube and on social media? Anything else you want to say to uh, to try to get people to, to come check you out? Okay, yeah, I know. Um, I just first of all, I just want to thank you guys. Um, enjoy spending the time talking about this all important topic. Um, I have a YouTube channel. It's the Big Retro Show, covering uh, movies, TV, uh, video games, toys, um, music, and I can be just be found by searching Big Retro Show. I also have a Twitter uh, at Big Retro Show and a Facebook page. Uh, I'm one of the only probably ones that use it still, but that's okay. Uh, um, yeah, no, love connecting with everyone on social media. Uh, love checking out YouTube channels. Um, I do have shout outs uh, to give. I want to just shout out everyone that um, has supported the channel and 
I want to shout you guys out too. You guys are, are doing excellent content. There's so many great content creators out there, guys. I don't want to miss anyone. Um, I I uh, shout out to everyone out there who's yeah. who's fighting the good fight on the uh, physical media front. Um, shout out to everyone who enjoys this uh, great hobby that we have, this great love of video games, and um, and, and that's about it. All right, awesome. So uh, the Got G Crew, Robert and Wes, uh, where can people find you on social media and YouTube and anything you want to say about your channel? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're gaming off the grid. Uh, that's where we are on YouTube. Uh, social media is the same handle on everything, yeah, I think. Twitter, right? Instagram, Facebook, we have them all. Um, yeah, we put up, try to do two a week, and then yep. we live stream. We talk about beer. We cover retro games, modern games, everything in between, just – Pretty much anything that we think is fun and it's video game related, we're going to cover it. Yeah. Um, as far as shout outs go, I, I think uh, it's just an awesome uh, community. Um, oh, it's such a fantastic, this, this retro gaming community, this YouTube community is so fantastic. Everyone's so friendly and it's just, it's just so yeah. cool to be a part of this. Yeah. I would encourage anybody that's uh, watching this or uh, listening um, to go hang out in the comment sections of any of our channels and you will cross paths with so many cool people and other channels. Um, Absolutely. You know, in fear of forgetting anybody, I don't want to just do specific yeah. shout outs, but we have such a tight knit community. And if you love that old chat room type vibe, jump into any of our videos, comment sections, and you're going to have a good time. It's just, mm -hmm. it's uh, a very cool thing. And then you'll find some other awesome people there that you may even like more than the channels, yeah. our channels that you know, you're watching right now. So absolutely and i'm and i will throw uh links in the description down below for both of you guys youtube channel and your social media um and you know one thing that i love about the the youtube community that we're all a part of is most people in the community don't look at it as a competition we yeah, look at it as let's support right it let, right let's support each other let's help each other out as much as possible because it's not a competition i mean no. it's really not and, it, and you really shouldn't look at it that way there's some people that do of course but uh, when you don't look at it as a competition and you look at and you support each other and help each other out it just helps everybody out man everybody yeah. everybody yeah. grows yeah. together together and, and and that's what it's all about yep absolutely mm -hmm. so um anything else you guys want to say before we uh end the video nope thanks again yeah thank you so much all right yeah thank you thank you guys uh it was a pleasure yep thanks guys it has been a lot of fun and until next time folks if you're not subscribed consider subscribing hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and let us know in the comments down below what you think about this topic as well we want to hear from you you know it can be a controversial topic sometimes um but you know we want to hear your stance on it if you're if you're team digital you know that's awesome we're not gonna bash anybody for being team digital so Throw, throw those comments down below and, and let's get a conversation started. Uh, until next time, everybody, keep playing games, having a good time, enjoying life, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>